Hey friend, and welcome back to RGD Gaming, the least toxic, most fun community in all gaming. And I also want to welcome back to my Zeri series. This is the fourth video in the series. I don't say that you necessarily need to watch them in order, but I'd recommend if you're brand new to the Zeri that you go back and watch the original Zeri guide where I touch on our build and runes. I'm going to be running the same ones in all these videos, with the exception of Exhaust and Shield. Let me know in the comments what you like to run on Zeri or what you want to see your team run when they play her. Have you ever thought much about what champion Zeri would not pair well with? Well, if you haven't, this video is going to stimulate an unused part of your brain. I'm going to talk about the times when you have a champ, specifically one like Zeri, that pairs so well with shielding supports and your teammate picks Swain, an untraditional support. I'll show you how to use her abilities to capitalize on your supports kit, specifically on Swain's in this video, how to take advantage of the enemy kit, and in this case it's going to be a Caitlyn and a Soraka, and you'll be able to win more games using these tips and tricks that I talk about. This game is quite interesting from Zeri's perspective because it's probably not traditionally a spot you might pick her. They only had a Yasuo for shields, and my support looked like it was going to be Senna, who isn't the greatest support for Zeri. Something to keep in mind is people inevitably will buy shields or even take shield in every game you pick Zeri in. If you become really solid on her, it can be okay to pick her against champions without a shield. Usually, your support will pick something that gives you one as well, so that'll help out and help round out her kit. And in this case, we have a Soraka last pick, which is actually a fine pick against us. They overheal, which produces a shield. Our ultimate, combined with Anta heal can reduce their team heal by a ton. And they're in a huge threat early game in lane, so we can farm up and pick our spots against them. You're going to immediately see us pair up and work together. Okay, so he uses his third ability, which is a root and a pull. And then what happens? As soon as that lands, I use my first ability, and I'm able to hit them, and we're able to put a good amount of damage on them. So... Maybe we don't have a shield that we can use together, but if we can combo our abilities and we can put out a ton of damage to the enemy, especially somebody like a Caitlyn who wants to put a lot of poke, Swain has so much range it can be ridiculous to deal with, especially in lane when you're going against him. But when he's on our team, let's use that to our advantage. So Swain's going to go around, he's going to try to hit with his third ability again, and boom, what happens? I combo right away and we're able to put out a ton of damage. And then he's able to hit Caitlyn again. So we're able to hit them with multiple abilities all at once, and that's what you want to do. So maybe Swain wasn't the best pick with Zeri as far as team fight goes, but we're gonna figure out a way that we can make this lane work to our advantage and try to get some kills or at least just not go behind. Because we don't want to fall behind to Caitlyn. She's very hard to deal with. And you see he was able to slow them and then I'm able to hit them with my first ability, fire off my second ability, and put out more damage to them. Um, so that's exactly what we're doing. One other, th oh man, so he's just crushing with that. So now he's comboing his abilities as well. So he's comboing, and I'm following up, and we're just hitting Caitlyn with so much. And even though she has a ton of range, she's going to have a really tough time laning against us in this matchup. The other thing you'll notice here, and now I see in a chance for us to get some damage on the Caitlyn and that she's alone, and you want to take advantage of that. So specifically when you have a late game champion against early game champion, if you see the support or the ADC go, you need to step up and put pressure on them. Doesn't mean you got to shove the wave in necessarily, but make them miss farm so that they don't get golden experience while they're waiting for their partner to get back. Don't just let them sit back and farm. So you saw me step up right there. The other thing I want to mention here is you'll see the first item I'm building is anti-heal. Whenever, whenever you are against a Soraka, you need to build this first item. You don't know how long your laning phase is going to be, and you don't know how many team fights you're going to have to deal with before somebody on your team buys anti-heal. So just buy it on the, the first time you go shopping, get it out of the way, and then you can continue on with your build. There's going to be other situations where you want to alter your build a little bit, but in this situation here, we're going to just alter it enough so that we have the anti-heal that we're kind of looking for, and that way we can slow Soraka down. The other thing, oh man, see, look how good this Swain is. I mean, and now I have my ultimate, so I really kind of want to step up, and once we hit one of those combos, I'm going to be able to step up. But when I have my ultimate, I can hit the entire enemy team in a team fight and reduce all the healing there. Um, now this Morgana's here, I, she does not realize what she's getting into, so she gets just hit, rooted, stunned, pulled, and then we take her out. There's just so much damage. I mean, it was good that she was there to try to hit us, or try to take advantage of the fact that we were shoving them in so far, but she had no idea what she was getting into, and that's what I'm saying. Combo with your team, so 
Swain was able to hit a bunch of abilities, I hit all mine, and then once my ultimate pops off, it's very hard to fight Zeri uh, when her ultimate is going off and she's slowing you, and then you're also getting hit by a, another mage, Swain in this case. Um, so this is a great start. Swain took the kills, but that's okay. And this Caitlyn is letting me hit her with my first abilities quite regularly. Um, and that's a mistake that she is making, and she really shouldn't be doing that. Um, I know she's having a tough laning phase, and she's probably frustrated at this point. But you can see, like, I'm, I'm almost poking her at will. And now I have anti-heal, which is going to greatly slow down Soraka from healing her and helping her, you know, regain the health that she's losing against me. But you see there, she's trying to put poke on me, and then all of a sudden she's getting hit by me, and Swain's range is longer than mine, so he can step back, stay safe, and still get her with those abilities. Um, so now I have my ultimate up again. So I'm kind of sort of looking to engage, but you can see just getting some poke onto them. Swain doing the same thing. And they're just trying to farm and step up, but we have so much pressure on them. Um, so what might have looked like a weird support partner is actually turning into a really great opportunity for us to improve on our EDC skills. And now you see both of us, our ultimates pop off. This is a really aggressive play and probably just we went in way too far there. Um, I'm trying to get the kill here and now I'm in a really weird spot. Um, I could have flashed and got it, but I was hoping I had enough time to let my abilities come up and I could jump over a wall, first ability, second ability, kill Caitlyn, and then flash out of there. Fortunately, I just didn't have enough time, so you don't have to get too overzealous, and that was probably a bit of an overstep on our part, but really not the end of the world. Here's a huge pet peeve of mine. Okay, so everybody's on the top side of the map, and this Nasus is just farming the bottom side of the map all by himself. Rotate. Whether you're the top or the bottom lane, rotate and stop him from doing that. Don't just blindly run back to your lane. I mean, Akali and Galio should wake up, and they can go help Swain. They can stay in mid. It doesn't really matter. But you want to rotate around the map, because otherwise that Nasus just gets a ton of farm. He gets to stack his passive, and then um, he probably even gets that tower as well, because it was almost dead. So if I don't show up there. Um, now, this is pretty tight. I sort of need to back off. I'm pretty low. Uh, but that went favorably. We were able to get uh, Galio, and now they're flaming, or we we're able to get Rift Herald. They're flaming Galio in the comments, and you just, you never want to do that. And so you'll see what I do here. This is a pro tip. Just say he's fine. Let him know that he's doing okay. Because a couple of things. By flaming him, you're never going to make him play better. He's not going to realize, oh, I was doing terrible. Now I'm going to do great. He's probably a fine enough player if he just plays his game. But if you tilt him by flaming him, it's going to cause him to play worse, and it's going to cause your team to do worse, and in the worst case scenario, he's going to just start inting and run it down. Uh, so I tell him he's fine, because I want him to know that he is, and I want him to continue trying. Use your dodge to dodge abilities like that uh, when somebody's coming at you, and then now I should use my second ability on the tower, and this is a dicey spot here. I kind of don't want to be there if they're going to dive me, but fortunately I had a lot of backup. Galio uses a beautiful ultimate. And now we're just chasing them down to try to get the kills. I don't know that we're going to be able to get the Yasso, but that's okay. Uh, I didn't even have to use my ultimate there in that case because there was just no need. I wasn't close enough. One thing that you want to make sure that you do, you need to be close enough to hit at least one of the enemy when you use your ultimate. Otherwise, you don't get the benefit from it. And so just make sure you hit one person. It can be the support. That's fine. And then as kills happen, so once you use your ultimate and you hit somebody, It'll hit everybody on the team, so you just need to be part of that. Just do damage to somebody that dies. Here's another pro tip. Go back and watch that again. I knew I was going to kill that Caitlyn the whole time. So what do I do? I run into that nook around that wall. I dive over. Second ability, first ability. As soon as I land on her, I ultimate. And she stands absolutely no chance. She can't get away from me because she has so much slow on her. And then you take it out. Make sure that you're doing that trick when you have the opportunity. You want to be jumping over walls like that, and you can do it on both sides of the map, especially when that tier 1 tower, so if you see the wall on the other side, kind of on their side, you can jump that the long way and really get behind the enemy when they don't even realize that it's happening to them. Uh, this Yasso is playing really aggressively, so I got nervous and flashed out of there. Let's see if we can get a kill. Galio, another beautiful ult from him, so he's actually not doing so bad, and then I'm able to get a double kill, and we take down a couple of them and just crush that team fight. So great team fight, good alt from the Galio, really kind of saved us there um, and helped us out. At, you know, at best, we were going to be okay in that fight, and at worst, we could have lost it. 
Uh, but fortunately, Galio comes in, knocks him up. And now this Nasus is in a weird spot, and so I want to try to slow him, but I don't know that we're going to catch him. He's going to be able to wrap around, and so you see me try to cut him off and slow him again. And I don't know that we're going to get him, but maybe we will. And I jump the wall, and I do get him. So that worked out well as good as well. And that's Soraka. You can see my slow and my damage, and I'm able to get Soraka there. But that's the power of the second ability over the wall. You do tons of damage, and you put a huge slow on them. It allows you to catch up. First ability, slow again, and get the kill. And now, as we're casually passing, we're going to farm their jungle, and then take Baron here, which is great call. Good job, team. And now I'm going to farm some waves, reset, get a shop in, and then look to group with my team and or farm their jungle. Um, so... I don't want to get too far ahead, but I see the Soraka just overstepped again, and we're going to take another kill. Now, I'm trying to get out of here. I didn't want to die there, but I thought getting a kill on a Soraka, even if I go down there, it's really not the worst play. When you have Baron, the less people the enemy has on the map, the better it is going to be for you. And now this Caitlyn's just way out of bounds, so they need to get out of there. And let's see if we're able to Baron. we got a lot of damage here and two big waves, and we're able to end. What's the saying? When life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. So Swain isn't the support that I would have picked for myself. It's not somebody that I ever thought that I would want with Zeri. But you can see when they use their abilities, I was following up. We were able to get an early lane advantage, and then we just snowballed that right into a victory. Because once Zeri gets that early advantage, you group with your team, you crush team fights, and that's how you win with her. Hopefully I see you on the Rift. GG.